Previously on the final pitch, Team VCDC meets their potential investor, Victor Kansuni. Real estate is not just about exchanging a commodity. You pass it on and it stops being a commodity. Now it becomes someone's entire life. And the entrepreneurs in the team go head to head in their business challenge. I, I enjoyed that part and I, I believe I was able to answer all of those uh, questions. I think I was really nervous. Oh! This week, the Mosaland's first vice president, Carrie Lagdameo, takes his entrepreneur picks to the land of promise, Davao. My name is John Aguilar, and I'm a serial entrepreneur based in Manila, Philippines. I've gathered five illustrious investors looking to fund and support the next great real estate play. Jet Yu, millennial dealmaker and CEO of property advisory firm Prime Philippines. Cesar Wee. CEO of fast-rising real estate development group, We Community Developers. Victor Kansunhi, founder and CEO of innovative modern homes developer, Victor Kansunhi Development Corporation. Carrie Lagdameo, first vice president of Davao-based property development firm, Damosa Land. And George Royeka, chief transport advocate of the beloved motorcycle hailing app, Angkas. Our goal is to find the best properties and urban solutions and forge joint ventures that will change the landscape of Philippine real estate. Many will try, but only a few will make it to the final pitch. Damosa Land Inc., the real estate arm of the Davao homegrown conglomerate Antlcor Group of Companies, is revolutionizing the real estate development industry in the southern regions of the Philippines. Carrie Lagdameo, the Mosaland's first vice president, took on many hats before finally deciding to join the family business. From what I can remember, I think I was uh, a pretty studious child, and that's why I actually started working at a very young age, when I was only 16 years old. I worked in the stock exchange for about two years, and that was during the summer. I don't know, I just felt that I had to do something productive. Somewhere along the way, obviously that, that changed. I ended up becoming an entrepreneur, setting up various businesses. One of which, I, I chose to get into what I would say is the most difficult business ever imaginable, which is the restaurant business. We were also in the forwarding business, so freight forwarding and customs brokering, we did that also for a number of years. Um, eventually had to close those down, but I think the, the key takeaway there was that you, know, you really have to be resilient. You're not going to be successful all the time, and that's what I always tell would-be entrepreneurs, is that you're going to fail, especially in the early years of your venture, so you just have to keep on going, don't get discouraged. When those didn't work out, then I went back to corporate life. Before I got into real estate, I was actually in banking. But somewhere along the way also, I, I said that uh, it was time to join the family business. And I decided to join the, the real estate company of my family. Under his leadership, the real estate company experienced a remarkable surge in growth. Our group, the Anflucor Group, we're really known for agriculture. So that's uh, one of the main businesses that was started by my late grandfather back in the 1950s. So real estate is actually one of the, the newer, relatively newer businesses in, in the group. But for me, it's something that I enjoyed, something that I liked because it was something new. And of course, real estate nowadays is enjoying really a, a resurgence or an uptick in, in business. So that's where I am today. And I guess uh, the rest, uh, they say, is history. The MOSA is actually an acronym for Davao Motor Sales. That was the first business that my grandfather uh, started here in Mindanao in the early 1950s. And that business was a dealer of Ford vehicles. He was credited with putting Mindanao on wheels. He provided trucks for whatever businesses that were starting back then. And eventually, we turned the car dealership into a real estate company. Uh, that was around the, the 1990s when that transformation happened. And we decided to keep the name because when the Mosa started here in Davao, it was pretty much the only business here in this part of the city. So it became somewhat of a landmark in, in Davao. Although this is a different barangay, the name of the barangay is uh, Lanang, people knew it as the Mosa. So this is also where we had our first real estate projects under the Mosa in this area. So we decided to retain the name and call it the Mosa Land. Well, we started first in commercial and office buildings. 
and then we ventured out a couple of years after into residential projects, so both horizontal and, and vertical projects. I guess you could say we experienced hyper growth and we got into hotels, industrial parks. Now we're doing mixed use projects on a much larger scale. What's actually interesting, a lot of our projects now, we try to put agriculture or an agriculture angle into these projects and, and we do that because it's part of our heritage um, as the Anflacor Group. We take pride in being a homegrown Mindanao development company. We like to get involved in all different kinds of real estate. So it's basically wherever we see an opportunity to help the community and to help evolve the kinds of businesses, that's where we like to invest in. It's a lot of first, it's a lot of innovation. He's always been one for networking and connections because he believes that's, that's a great way to entrench yourself in the business community, to get to know many people and what they do and how you can help each other out in the business ecosystem. Gary has a big advocacy for inclusive development, especially outside Metro Manila, because the Philippines has so much potential and he believes that Davao, Mindanao, has great opportunity to really expose and to show what they have. I've decided to join the final pitch. I particularly like the angle for this season because it's about real estate. I really feel that there's a lot that we can still learn. And I think nowadays we really have to listen to the youth and how they can help evolve real estate. Because as I always say, is that real estate is so much different from where it was, say, 10, 20 years ago. It's not as simple as just building a, a home and selling it or developing land and selling it. There's a lot of value add that we have to put into our projects because nowadays people are looking for that overall experience. We're always looking at how we can do our business better. How can we construct better? How can we do it more efficiently? How can we do it in a more green way? So we're looking at new technologies, new building methodologies that can really help our, our business. But at the same time, if they can also help the environment and if they can really help the community that uh, surrounds our project. So our product is Waste. It's an on-demand waste hauling platform that connects homes to the facilities that recycle, upcycle, and dispose them properly. Waste, they have a great novel idea that can kind of hit two birds with one stone in the sense that you're providing a good service to the customers and you're also doing something that's environmentally friendly. I think her idea is, is something that's very exciting and if she can pull it off, then she, I think she'll be very successful. How does Brookie work? Your staff simply uploads the information to the data platform. Your sales team can have access to that information anytime, anywhere by using available messaging apps such as Facebook and Viber. Brookie, everyone's favorite. It's a product that nowadays everybody needs. You know, some kind of artificial intelligence in, in, in their business. And it's because of the, the speed. Developers will definitely pay for more than what they're offering. So I think there's a huge opportunity there. If you ask any developer nowadays, they would need to have that kind of service on their websites. We would like to revolutionize the traditional tricycle transport system that didn't change for the last 10 years. Tricycle, I mean, outside of Metro Manila, in most other provinces, tricycles are still the most common form of transportation. And even in our projects, in some of the cities that we're located in, tricycles are still the, the main mode of transport. That, that was the light bulb moment when we heard the pitch of tricycle. We're a property tech startup specializing in visual marketing content and content management services for property presentations. Riva Staff is interesting because buyers will require that the images that you put on the internet are beautiful. It also eliminates the need for the, the developer or the broker to actually do a stylized shoot, which will really take time, it will take money, and it will take expertise. So with Riva staff, it seems like they will provide that, that service to you. Well, you know, I want to get to know them personally. If you're going to invest in any kind of business, I think what you're really investing in is the entrepreneur themselves. You know, I'd like to get to know what drives them, what fuels them, why they're doing what they're doing. So I hope to get to see them in a more relaxed environment and hopefully they can enjoy seeing our projects as well. Up next. So now I'd like to call in the first Vice President of the Mosaland, Carrie Legameo. So you guys are going to have the privilege of being one of the first guests in a lot of these projects that we'll be taking you around. To the Mosaland. The Mosaland.
Hello entrepreneurs. Hi John. Welcome to the land of promise, Davao. We're here in the corporate headquarters of Damosa Land because you are the picks of Cari Florendo Lagdameo for the final pitch. Now, traditionally, the Antlocor Group has been in an industry that has been one of the oldest industries in the world, that is Agri, and you all are pitching technology companies. So this is your chance to be able to convince a traditional business to embrace technology moving forward. So now, I'd like to call in the first Vice President of the Mosaland, Kari Legramio. Kari. Hey, John. Hi, entrepreneurs. Welcome to our beloved city, Davao City. We have a, quite a busy two days lined up for you guys. We'll be touring you around several projects across the city and even in nearby cities. So you guys are going to have the privilege of being one of the first guests in a lot of these projects that we'll be taking you around. Oh, we're excited. You. Awesome. Good, good. We look forward to it. So right now, Carrie is going to give a quick tour of the corporate headquarters. Let's get started. Well, I think the projects that we'll be showing them, what the Mosa land is all about, but what also what Davao is all about. As we go around and we show them the different projects, I, I want to see how their mind will work. If there are more ideas that come about because of them seeing the projects. And who knows, hopefully we can collaborate in the future with them. So entrepreneurs, we'd like to start it here at our what we call our heritage wall. So the company has its roots dating back all the way to the 1940s. And you can see here, this is our, my grandfather and our late founder, Antonio Florendo, here with um, Henry Ford himself. He brought the Ford brand here to Mindanao. He was known to be the man who put Mindanao on wheels. When Ford exited the Philippines in the 1980s, the company slowly transitioned to that of a real estate company. The Mossa became the Mossa Land in 2004. Then we started our commercial developments and our office developments here here in the, the Mosa district here in Davao City. We branched out into residential projects, industrial parks, mixed use projects, and hotels. We like to invest in areas where we see opportunities to uplift the lives of people here in Mindanao. And now we're doing that through real estate. Next stop on their tour is the Davao Diamond Tower, located within the Damosa IT Park. Our new office tower, when you look at the architecture, it's actually based on agriculture. Our challenge was how can we depict the heritage of our family and the heritage of Mindanao, which is agriculture, into the architecture of the building. So when you look at the exterior of the building, it depicts a cross-section of banana fibers. Yeah, we were able to put our heritage into the architecture of the building. This is uh, what the common elevator lobbies of the building will look like. So we equipped it with five high-speed elevators. We also wanted to give it um, a lot of space with a lot of sunlight. So actually this will be a window here. So there's going to be a lot of natural light. Again, we're trying to be sustainable as well. You know, the architectural fins in the exterior of the building will also serve dual purpose. So it's not just for the architectural look, but it will also help to deflect uh, the sunlight. We really hope that this will become somewhat of a, a monument in the city. Something that when a WNU sees the building, they can be proud of and say, yeah, that's in my city. This is actually one of the last buildings that you'll see when your plane lands. Hopefully it'll also serve as like a welcome, welcome to Davao. When they see the building, they'll know, okay, I'm in Davao City. The next part of the tour takes the entrepreneurs to a 12 hectare township project in the island garden city of Samal. When you come here to Bridgeport, this is the first thing that we will be able to see here. This is what we call the Welcome Pavilion. And right away, we'll introduce you here to our scale model. So the total project, it's about 13 hectares, including everything along the seaside and extending up until the mountaintop. Actually, where you see those coconut trees straight ahead, that's where the site for the first condominiums will be. So can you imagine, you come in on your boat, you go up to your condo, and your view is you know, almost a 360 degree view of Davao City and of Samal Island. The main feature will be the marina, which is 
where we got down from the boat just a little while ago. So a lot of the activity will be centered around the marina. Basically, we're trying to promote the boating lifestyle. Because here in Davao, the ocean is very accessible. It's probably just 10 minutes away from the airport, and it's just a couple of minutes away from a lot of residential properties in Davao City. We'll have one subdivision, but very limited. This will only be about 22 lots, about 600 square meters in size. You can imagine it will be a very select uh, clientele that we will be having here. But even this condo project the project itself is very low density. It's only about four stories. So can you imagine a three hectare property and you only share it with 300 other residents. Nice. You'll have a beautiful clubhouse which will also be overlooking the view. We also have some future projects that we wish to do by the, the ocean side. So later on the, there's a plan to put up a, a hotel as well. We have units for sale in case you guys are all interested. <laughs> Maybe you Sir John. I think if I do decide to move to Davao, definitely I would want one of these slots over here. <laughs> we'll reserve it for you already. <laughs>
It's day two of Team Demosa's Davao Projects Tour. This time, Kerry takes the team to the Anflo Industrial Estate in Panabo City, Davao del Norte. Well, welcome to the Anflo Industrial Estate here in Panabo City, Davao del Norte. And this is a project that I would say is very close to my heart. And I think a big reason for that is that this is actually one of the only working agro-industrial parks in the country today. Whereas most industrial parks are focusing on other kinds of manufacturing, we like to target companies that are involved in the whole value chain of agro-industrial processing or agribusiness. The total project is about 63 hectares and we have several operating factories that are currently exporting today. And what we're really providing here is for agro companies or agribusiness companies to be able to set up their factories efficiently, to export efficiently and cost effectively. It's like a co-working space for agri. <laughs> okay, I guess you can say that, yes. The team finally heads to the 88 hectare agritourism and nature tainment project of the Mosalan for their business challenge. Hello entrepreneurs. Hello, Hello. Hello. Welcome to Agria here in Panabo City. I hope um, you are well rested because this 88 hectare project is the site of your business challenge. This project, Agria, is actually the product of 10 years of planning. We recently launched this project this year in 2019. We believe it's the only master plan township in the country whose main focus is agriculture. Carrie, to explain the tourism component and the mechanics, you're bringing in two of your team members. Macy Bibat is our project head for Agria, Hello. and Kitten Mambong is our marketing manager. Hi. You're actually here in Panabo, and as mentioned by Carrie, Panabo is actually very rich in terms of agriculture. So, as part of our placemaking activity here in Agria, we have a whole nature tainment component, or what we call our agri tourism component. And then Kitten will explain further the challenge for today. Okay, I hope you guys are ready and you had a sunscreen on because your challenge today will be creating a travel vlog regarding the project, making sure that the three brands are being um, mentioned, the Domasa Land, Agria, and Ameria, which is the residential component of Agria. And the main objective of the travel vlog should be creating awareness about the project and the importance of agriculture. So we've divided you into two teams. So for today, it's the men versus the women. So Reva staff and Tricycool, you are team, would you care to guess? Reva Cool. Reva Cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. And Waste and Brookie, care to guess your team name? Brookcast? Your Waste Key. Waste Key. <laughs> <laughs> so for this challenge, we will be giving you one hour to complete your Vlogs. So entrepreneurs, your one hour starts now. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> when I heard that it was gonna be a vlog, it's like, yes, <laughs> I can do this. I do this all the time. <laughs> Welcome, Welcome to, to Agria. Okay, let's try that again, just to make sure we have good footage. So hi guys, welcome to our channel. Rama Cool. This is our first, first vlog in Mindanao edition. In We're pa in Panabo City. Yeah. It really complements, you know, my personality teaming up with Nico. The output would be awesome. One, two, three, go. We have lettuce. Alugbate. And the rest of the harvest. Hey guys, so this is the pick and pay area or otherwise known as the high value crops areas. I was thinking this is like an advantage for us. Uh, girls is more into the marketing side of things. Although I was also thinking these boys are also artistic on the other end. Let's see. Here in Panabo, it's actually the largest in the world that supplies Cavandish banana. Panabo is also very international because we have a Taiwanese banana <laughs> in Mindanao. Oh my god, my horse! Hi, Kuya! Uh oh! Uh oh! The <laughs> <laughs> call of nature. Mm. Okay, so we're now here at the coconut walkway, and there's two types of coconut, right? Right here. So, right now, you're going to. Going to play! <laughs> okay then! <laughs> and having a facility like that in a development like this one, an awesome place for family bonding and to create family memories. And then there's... Whoa! Go, go, go! 
I also enjoyed taking the footage of her going around. I thought that was a fun, fun shoot. Ang init, brother. Ligo mo na ako. OJ, kamusta ang ligo mo? Sarap, brother. Sarap. Okay. We did that for an entertainment purposes. Because we wanted our viewers not just to be serious about things. There is a joyful way to explore things. So right now we're here in the aquaculture area and I think we caught some... Crabs! Crabs! Ayun! Oh! Yay! Oh! <laughs> it was my first time also to see how you catch crabs. Mm -hmm. So for me that was an interesting experience. Back to next. Let's go, bro. It has a very provincial feel out of it. So, especially uh, again, if you're living in the city, it's kind of nice to see that kind of scene. Now we're headed to the aqua fun area, which is the boating area, and we're gonna try the paddle boat. Yes. Wow. Napa fry yung put ko. So by the way guys, Agria is located in Panabo City. Yes, this is just 35 minutes from Davao City. Mm -hmm. And it's also the great advocacy of the Mosa land to really discover areas within Mindanao that they can uplift, that they can create wonderful, amazing projects. And I think that's what embodies their core value of Malasaki. Entrepreneurs, you have five minutes to go. Let's do this. Arriving at the aqua farm, it is 55 minutes already consumed. So we have five minutes to strategize things. Luckily, what he did is he grabbed those crabs and play it around. Sa akin ka rito, aray! Ihahagis lang namin? Pa ganyan? Oh my God! May nakuha ko! May nakuha ako! Sayang! Dapat pala pinakalagyan na! Sorry! Kinain lang niya yung worm. Tapos umalis. Pakundo! Yes, sir! Ihanda ang pick-up! Masusunod, sir! Sana ang... Pick-up! <laughs> sir, nahanda na po ang inyong pick-up! Your time ends in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and that's it! You know, I think despite what you've been through the past hour, you guys look refreshingly cool right now. I think it's it's the weather here, right? Must be. You know, we've had a great two days with you, and this last experience with you experiencing this project, it will be documented in your individual blogs that we will give you one week to prepare and eventually submit. And the winner of this challenge will be revealed during the final pitch. But Carrie, the two days spent with these entrepreneurs have been awesome. Yeah, so entrepreneurs, thanks so much. I hope you guys learned a lot from all of the different projects that we took you around to. And we hope that you got a perspective of our Davao and what we've been harping on here in Mindanao. And that there's so much opportunities in real estate, in agriculture. And so we hope that it really opened up your eyes. Thank you so much for all of your efforts and we look forward to seeing your vlogs. And we look forward to seeing you deliver your final pitch. Until then, great job today. Next time on The Final Pitch, Team Angkas gets to know the power couple George Royeka and Angeline Tham and tackle their business challenge. You are going to be Angkas Bikers. Sasakay kami ni Patrick dito. Magra right lip, right lip kami dito. As a biker, I was very confident. Ba, mahirap pala to, no? Common problem ng bawat Pilipino ay traffic. So, ang solusyon nun ay angkas. Hindi porkit motor ka, singit ka na lang ng singit. <laughs>